we'll, we'll stick, stick with the current political scene, but take a um, topical question in a way from Brian Hall, please, relating to what happened last week. Does the emergence of UKIP at the Eastleigh by-election represent a danger to the Tories at the next election? The UKIP coming second and the Tories coming third at Eastleigh, is this a, a danger to the Tories? And I suppose implicitly, what should they do about it? Um, it's no good asking you, Diane James, whether you think you're a danger to the Tories, because presumably you do. Bob Crow, what do you think? Well, I think UKIP are a danger to the Tories. I think they uh, are Tories. Uh, and the policies are... <laughs> the policies are... The policies they promote is for big business. And the fact, as I said earlier on, you know, that the policies of both the New Labour, Liberals, Tories and UKIP are all one of big business, keeping anti-trade union laws in place, emasculating working people so they can't fight, fight, creating mass unemployment, lowering pay. That's what you've had over 35, 40 years of destroying infrastructure in this country. You know, we've got a country here... We're, sorry, with a UKIP was the question. What's going to happen? Well, I don't know what's going to happen with UKIP. It's not me to say what's going to happen with UKIP. I would say that the Tories are being particularly concerned about UKIP because uh, UKIP are saying, in my view, that they're asking people that they should have a referendum now. Why have they got to elect a government which has lost all kind of credibility and at the end of that government, some seven and a half years' time, you will get a referendum? If it's good enough for the Spanish, Irish and other groups of people throughout Europe to have a say on Europe, why can't we have a referendum before we go into the next general election and why have we wait another seven years? So if I was the Tories... I'll be extremely concerned about what the damage UKIP is doing. The woman there in the second row. UKIP are, are a really poor excuse for a political party. All they do is focus on the vulnerable people in society and scaremonger them into getting their votes instead of the main three parties. And I think they are, they're disgusting. Hugh Diane James. Uh, uh, can I just go back, please? No, 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 no. Well, she thinks you're disgusting. You'd better answer her first okay, and then go um, back. I'd probably need you, if you don't mind, to just define why you're saying disgusting. We've had uh, comments you made... You prey on vulnerable people in society who feel that they're, they're going to be attacked by immigrants coming into our country when there's a lot of positives that immigrants bring to our country and you just prey on the vulnerable. Well, uh, let me... First of all, just go back to our policy on taxation. First of all, no, we please answer her question. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm trying and to get can there. Can you do it the other way round? Okay. And come to the tax. Okay. I don't think we are in any. We have got a very, very good policy to encourage young people into work. We also have are been the only party to identify what is undermining our economy at the moment and what is undermining the employment prospects for young people. What you say is rubbish, though. How are four million? Bulgaria is going to come to our country when they've only got a population of 7 million people. We That's didn't, absurd. We, excuse That's me, we didn't, absurd. Actually, we didn't actually say that. You if, did. I read your party you would, literature in uh, the way that it was, <clears throat> The way that figure came about was a survey conducted in Bulgaria by the Bulgarian government. They identified that 56% of the respondents indicated they would like to leave so the country. So why would you use such unbalanced data in your publications well, then, when I don't all it does is scare people into voting for you because they think they don't want migrants in we the country. We didn't use unbalanced data, you we used did. government data produced by the Bulgarian government. If you're no. then casting assertions about the quality of Bulgarian data, I can't comment on that. We merely cited what was in the public domain and we used that in a correct and accurate fashion. But, but no, you you see, but, uh, it's an issue of whether you thought they were all going to come or whether just a large percentage of Bulgarians would rather be living here than in Bulgaria. Well, as I, Slightly different question. As I exactly. just said, you know, the clear you, message David. from the, the survey conducted there was that 56% and 56% of the figures... No, 56 Your implication was they were all going to come. Well, I don't think that was the implication <laughs> we led to it. We, let, we, made, we drew the conclusion, and it was from the, Bulga from the Bulgarian government data, that that proportion of the population wanted to leave that country. And in terms of the proportion of residents that have already left that country, a significant proportion are in Germany and a significant proportion are in UK. So the, and we happen to be, in terms of our benefits system and our entitlement uh, system, the most attractive destination in Europe. And just remember, if you're a Bulgarian or a Romanian at the moment, you might be on a basic weekly wage of a couple of hundred pounds. You will come here and you will double that just in terms of your benefits entitlement. Right. So Stephen a very, very strong case for saying mm. the controls are needed. Stephen Twigg. 
Look, I think it's really, really important that we have a proper and balanced debate about immigration. I think in the earlier question we managed to do that. But I do think if we go down a route of a kind of scaremongering and taking a survey and then assuming that everyone who says that they'd rather live somewhere else is then going to come and live here, that doesn't aid a proper, balanced, healthy debate about immigration or about Europe. To answer, to answer Brian's question, you know, I think all of us in the... Uh, main established political parties have to recognise that there is a lot of voter disenchantment. You know, the Tories lost out and slipped to third place in Eastleigh. It was a terrible result for the Tories in Eastleigh. But I don't think any of us can be complacent. People are disillusioned with politics. They want different answers from politicians. And that's why I think all of us, whichever party we're in, have got to engage with legitimate public concerns, whether it's on immigration, whether it's on jobs and the economy, whether it's on the health service. And I hope that that is what we can do. And I respect that UK is clearly a serious political party that's engaged in serious debate but I just, going back to my original point hope that they will not engage in some of the tactics that we heard about from the questioner in the audience. But do you think they might let Labour politics. through by, by hurting the Tory vote in enough constituencies at a general election? I'm not going to get into kind of speculation about possible, there's all sorts of different outcomes that could happen. Some Labour people switch to UKIP Tories switched to UKIP, Lib Dems to UKIP. You know, Lord Ashcroft did some very interesting polling about what people uh, who'd voted in Eastleigh, where they would might vote at a future election. It's very, very hard to know. We've got to win back people to vote Labour who switched away from us in 2005 and 10. A lot of them went to the Lib Dems or the Tories, but some of them now might be tempted to vote UKIP. It's got to be positive. It can't just be negative about another political party. I completely agree with the lady at the back there in that um, UKIP are just picking up. Everyone, like you say, is disenchanted mm. with you politicians and yeah. the fact that, I mean, none of us believe really that you're connected with society. Mm. I think that needs to be addressed. Mm. But I think that scaremongering, there are a lot of scared people out there and it's, it's going to be a dangerous time come the next election because parties like UKIP, who do say some outrageous things, um, they're going to capitalise on it and it's very